right, so we are headed out to uh, a customer called me up this morning and said he had a pump down. He was having trouble figuring out what pump he had. Uh, and he was having trouble getting it out of the septic tank. So since he's close to the office, Jeremy and I decided we would run out and see what we can find wrong. So we're gonna do that. All right, so the first thing that we're doing here is uh, just checking the voltage uh, going through. So I found that this looks to be the incoming power. Uh, we do have voltage coming through, so I checked this point here. And then where, where it touches the contact here, and we've got about 240, 248 volts coming in there. Now what I'm curious about is a little switch here. Now that switch definitely appears to cut that voltage. So we know for sure that that's our incoming power. So let's just see if we can make sense of the rest of these wires. And we've got two floats or one? Let's see here. We've got a pump float. Looks like we got an extra wire. It's capped off. That might be from an old float. Right, let's grab the trusty pocket knife with the poop hands. Don't drop it down the hole, Chris. So this is definitely an old pump cable that was probably from the original pump. This looks to be our current pump cable. This big one here. We definitely got some splice action, something going on, funky. Everything goes to one, and this one, of course we got a bunch of old wires in here that we don't know half of what go to what, because they're all old and just left there. But yeah, it looks like they're just running that pump straight off of that float and it's just spliced in. I don't even think that contactor is part of it. Could be depending on what's in this. So I think it's just the float switch that's breaking the connection. I don't think it has anything to do with the pump. It could just be a bad float. Let me save. Let me check that again there. Yeah, so it's off now. I'm gonna stick that nut. Are there two wires in that or three? What's that? You took off. Three. But I think they don't all need to be there. Because I think we got this float switch is spliced right here. So I think we need to cut that splice open. See what's in there. And then uh, we can hook that pump directly to power and see if it does anything. Okay, so just to kind of recap what we've done, we looked in this control box type of deal here. It looks like that control box isn't really even in play anymore. It's just used as a junction box. Uh, we've got some old wires from an exist oh, a previous pump and float in there uh, that all land in this box, but it looks like basically what they did, uh, and we're gonna confirm that by cutting into the splice, is they're just running power straight through the box into the float and then breaking a leg from there uh, and firing, firing the pump that way. So we're gonna take a look. We'll open this splice up and see what we find. Before I do that, double check the power. Yeah, 
All right, so we're off. We're off. Oh, what the hell? They must have heat shrinked it. It's the only thing I can think of. Is our pump cable that is this guy cut that right off just kind of just move that float out of the way so now we'll cut into this Quickly ohm out this motor, see if we got any shorts to ground. I'm pretty tempted to hook it straight to power. We do have some discoloration on the wires though. That could be an indication of heat, I do believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, YouTube. Not detecting a short to ground on that side. And we're not detecting a short to ground on that side. Let's kick up the scale a bit. Uh, I went to 200K. Now I am using our handy dandy meter. Decided I'd bring it out in the field today. Um, I do have a good, a better meter here in case anything I get is questionable, but I'm kind of a fan of this $18 meter just because it's cool. Zero. And, oh, don't go in the poo. about lost your $18 meter. Wouldn't have been worth its weight and poop. Definitely got resistance there. We've definitely got resistance there. Starting to lean in the direction that we just got a bad float switch today. Uh, we'll, we'll find out here real quick though. And since this is kind of just an exhibition out here Mostly for YouTube, I didn't bring a full-fledged service truck out. Just a sales truck, so we're gonna see what we can get done with just what we brought. All right, let's get this last one hooked up. We'll see if the pump comes to life. That should be it. All right, let's see what happens. She's just humming. You hear it? I guess it's, we'll see if we can get that pump out. It's loose. Now the heavy part. It smells good in there. These people must eat well. So it turned out it wasn't a float issue after all. We went ahead and bypassed the float as you probably saw. Um, and it was in fact the pump. We checked it out, it's pulling really high amperage. Um, 
And that could be a clog, but this is an affluent pump, so the chances of it being a clog are basically nothing. We'll still tip it over and look underneath. If there's anything, if there's anything to show, we'll definitely show that. Uh, otherwise, the next step for us is uh, to go ahead and uh, take a look here, figure out what parts we're gonna need to get this system up and running and uh, get the customer a quote for the repair work. Um, so with that, thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully you were able to catch something interesting out of all of this. We'll see you next time.